Hi, I'm Dr. Mon Vergara from the La Salle University from the Ramon D. Del Rosario College of Business. I'm currently the ambassador for Jose Maria Santa Maria Professorial Chair in Multimedia Advertising. I'm here to present my paper, Events in the Time of the Coronavirus Pandemic. The pandemic has changed the live events industry landscape. This was brought about because in early 2020, government authorities imposed preventive restrictions that saw cancellations of large gatherings, concerts, festivals, conferences, all were postponed or canceled. And then in March 16, in a bid to encourage people to stay home, Chris Morgan of the band Coldplay gave an impromptu home concert through Instagram Live, which would have spawned a series of similar online at-home concerts, platforms from artists all over the world. The next live event frontier moved online, made be for businesses, schools, and they all moved their work online. How does this affect the live event experience? It does affect it very hard. The immediate instinctual answer is it is not the same. But with any type of disruption, the goal is to adapt and find a new way. In events, they always say the show must go on. People, the place, and the process to everybody seemed it was the same. So the experience can easily be replicated. The only difference was it was going to be an online venue. We look into four types of events, award shows, the Emmys and the VMAs, sports events, NBA and the F1 races, concerts. We discuss the changes in event delivery and how it affected the live experience. In the Emmys and in the VMAs, the hosts were live on stage in the venue. They were hosting like it was a face-to-face -face event. The performances for the VMAs were pre-recorded. A lot of the talents went through different protocols to ensure their safety and their health. Emmy nominees were remotely located in their homes or they had their own bubbles. What was common to both? There were no live audiences and they were both streamed online. F1. The F1 was one of the few sports that was hit really bad. Well sought after drivers, popular ones, were also infected by COVID. They now cancel several of the events to an extent that they postponed some. They still got to continue, but most of them were done in Europe, Bahrain, Turkey, and Abu Dhabi. They were placed in team bubbles. They were highly monitored. Another thing that was common, there was no live audience. The NBA, this one you might be much more familiar with, the Disney bubble. All the teams that needed to be participate, needed to participate, traveled to Orlando, Florida, to Disney world. They had the facility to have basketball courts where the players can practice. They had the hotels where the players could stay 
they had a kitchen that can feed all the players. One thing was common still, there were no live spectators. Award shows and sports events are meant to be watched by the audience, live and also on the screen. The audience is expected to be entertained. Majority will watch through a screen. The experience of the people watching from the screen would be the same or similar. Though the energy that comes from a live audience, the cheers that feed into the adrenaline rush that validate the performances was not present. One big conference tried to push through on the same conference dates. The conference was attended by hundreds of thousands of people over a long weekend online, wherein there were virtual panels, virtual exhibit halls, virtual everything. The fans, the frequent attendees were left disappointed though, because a lot of the panels were pre-recorded. The meetups did not happen. The movie previews were not done. Events and parties were nowhere to be found. Meeting all our icons, the actors, the actresses, they were not there. The exclusive swags and collectibles attractions were not even part of it. There was no interaction. There is a unique dynamic in shared experiences, immersive experience, not passive spectator. Comic-Con at home became passive spectators, for passive event for spectators. A far cry from the immersive and sensorial experience of attending Comic-Cons in person. Potential value, it widens the audience who were able to attend like me. The BTS Bang Bang, Con Live Map of the Soul, was able to uh, go live and peak 756,000 concurrent viewers in 107 countries and territories. Map of the Soul 1 had 993,000 viewers in 191 countries and territories for a two-day event. Talent and production live on stage, in venue, Audience, all remote from different countries. Audience, mainly fans, felt connected through a light stick, a contraption that defines a fan and an important feature of a K-pop concert experience. BTS used technology to reach out and engage with fans. What is the conclusion? We tried to mimic the in-person experience, what people were used to. We focused on that too much. The problem was that the online environment limit what we can that what can be replicated, leaving the guests feeling disappointed, disconnected, and disengaged. Engagement is found lacking. The point is not to replicate the in-person experience, but to conceive design and produced an entirely novel and different experience. We have learned this in our classrooms, in our work environments. We must adapt and change. We cannot go back to what we got used to. Thank you.